Now for more on China's unemployment rate, let's go to Jun Qian. He's a professor of finance as well as the executive dean at Fan Hai International School of Finance at Fudan University. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to be with you. Well, we know that the, there are many government efforts to help graduates find jobs, but what more can they do short term to stimulate the youth unemployment sector? Uh, I, I think that's a very important question. Um, actually, one thing that, that's important is that I think labor economics need to catch up with the new trend uh, in youth employment or unemployment. Uh, we know that in China, uh, the majority of uh, young people in the age bracket between 16 and 25, that, that, that's what we characterize as youth uh, labor force, the majority of them is actually in school, uh, undergraduate school, and, and more and more uh, in, um, uh, in master programs. So what, what that means is that they will be looking for full-time jobs starting at the age of 22 to 24. So how, how do we, how do we um, analyze their behavior? Uh, the process of searching for a job is very important. So, so, so that's one thing. I, I think that uh, statistics and labor economics uh, need to catch up with uh, the new trend. That's one. Two, as you already said, it, it is important uh, that the government uh, keep helping firms, especially small and medium-sized enterprises. We know that these firms are very important. Uh, they're providing, they've been providing the majority of uh, uh, employment positions in urban areas over the past 10 years. Uh, and we know that uh, some of these firms are currently facing some uh, financial burden. So uh, the government, financial institutions uh, need to continue helping them. Uh, when they are doing well, they feel the need to expand, to invest, and they will increase the size of their labor force. And that means there will be more stable uh, 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 hiring positions opening up. On the other hand, I think so. I, I, I'm, I'm an educator. I work in a university. We need to also, uh, universities, along with professional schools, also need to better prepare uh, the young people uh, for the job market. Uh, they need the necessary skills, whether to become an engineer, to compute, a computer scientist, or to become a mechanic in a fast-changing factory they need to acquire necessary skills. So that's also important. And finally, I think the, the, the young people themselves, in addition to acquiring the skills, uh, they need to adjust the mentality. We know that the living standards in China have been improving uh, uh, very fast over the last 30, 40 years. The average household income has gone up. So that might change some people's uh, expectation of what type of jobs uh, are suitable for them. Uh, on the other hand, you have to balance what's available. So, so I think all of these needs to happen in order to have a more stable job market for youth, but also more accurate statistics for analyzing the job market. You brought up so many great points. I want to get to a couple of them. Uh, first of all, the age differences. Important to note that a lot of those kids are still in school. Um, and you mentioned expectations and what kids are learning in college. A few months ago, we know that China saw a record number of college graduates uh, leaving school looking for jobs. Uh, what are you seeing with some of your former students uh, as they're going through that search? And what advice do you have for them right now? So, you know, it is interesting because, um, you know, I, I, I teach finance. I mean, if you look at the field of financial services over the last 10 years, I've been back in China for 10 years. I mean, it's changing very fast. One thing that is true, not only in financial services, but also in many, many other service areas is the use of technologies. So I would say that for all college graduates and also for uh, students in uh, graduate programs, understanding the use of modern technologies in the fields you want to pursue is crucial. It is a must, right? Because otherwise, if you just have this traditional knowledge of how this industry works, that's not enough. And technology improvement, uh, that, that's happening every day. That's not to say that AI might replace some of the current positions, but as long as you know how technologies are being used in your field, 
and you also uh, make sure you, you, you have the know-how, you have the creativity, uh, I, I, I'm not so worried that AI will, will replace all the jobs, because at the same time, AI will create more jobs, uh, especially in, in new, new uh, industries and also in uh, service industries um, in the cities. Is there some sort of big disconnect, and I'm not talking about just in China, but when you're, we're talking about technology and these jobs, how AI is exploding and growing, how do these young people uh, learn and get those skills? And then add to that, you have a lot of these sort of trade jobs that are required with the explosion in uh, new energy vehicles and EVs, the need for mechanics and people to work on those sort of things. Uh, where's this big disconnect? How do we bring that together so that uh, everything can kind of move along at the same pace? You're absolutely right. There, there is a, a con disconnect, uh, not only in China, in some of the sectors, some of the areas, uh, but also I, I think in uh, almost every uh, uh, advanced economies. I mean, I mean, for the take the example of China. In in you know, I, I live in Shanghai. If you look at Shanghai and uh, surrounding areas, that's that's one of the most developed areas uh, uh, economically in China. You you do see this disconnect disconnect in the sense that on the one hand, uh, some young people are looking for better jobs, uh, matching their expectations. On the other hand, there are factories, uh, advanced factories. They need more people. To, 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 to work on the positions, and they need more people to control the machines, to com control the computer programs. I mean, we, we've seen that um, um, automation has been very prevalent, has been increasing in these factories in Shanghai and surrounding areas. So, so, so here's an example of a disconnect. So again, uh, on the one hand, I, I think uh, universities, schools, and professional schools they do need to update their curriculum. They need to increase what we call the practical of the curriculum. That is, the students are encouraged to do internships before they land a, a formal offer. At the same time, it's not just the uh, uh, companies that need to do better on-site training for these students. I think the schools need to increase the practice, the practical part in their curriculum, uh, and that's something that we're we're doing uh, at our school. And on the other hand, it is very important uh, for all the schools, all the people, to have, you know, maybe maybe 100 percent equal opportunity is not possible, but it's important to uh, to improve the access of schools and more young people to learn technology, and that that that's very important because if you can't, if you don't have if you don't know, even know what are the technologies required, you can learn uh, what's needed. Very and then important. finally, uh, the expectation part, adjusting expectation part is very important because there will be new jobs created. Um, as long as you have the skills, there will be uh, jobs that are waiting for you. And that's a universal theme I see among a lot of young people. Professor and Executive Dean Jun Chen, thank you so much for your insight.